Sensei, over the last week, like I said in our last episode, we missed a lot of stuff. We did. One of the craziest things I think I've ever seen as far as strength and conditioning for <laughs> a high-level professional athlete was what I what I witnessed during this time that I just could not speak on because we didn't have the pod ready. Are you ready to hear what I'm about to tell you? I am ready, bro. Do you know the man that has conquered stamina and cardio and, quite frankly, maybe God himself in David Goggins? Yes, he is the new Chuck Norris, bro. Oh, bro, he kicks Chuck Norris's ass. <laughs> that's Chuck that's Norris. a crazy statement. No, bro, are you kidding me? Bro, David Goggins Chuck, whips saying, Chuck Norris, dog. When you're talking about the lore of saying Actually, what, I don't like, know the, that David the Goggins meme can fight. That Chuck, the me, exactly. The meme in, in Chuck Liddell was a legit judo black belt. You mean well, Chuck Norris, Norris but yes. Chuck, bro, I'm losing it. Bro. <laughs> the legit, <laughs> I'm tripping. <laughs> This I man's in this, this man's in blue jeans. Bell, he's sipping lean, and he's got salt. Oh, whoa, whoa. This and is, he's this got grape. salt and vinegar chips. Gatorade Zero. <laughs> it better be, dude. It better be. I don't know now. Jeez, Freaking good, sensei, I'll dirt. Good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But yes, David Goggins <sighs> is a ridiculous individual. Here, let's just. I mean, do I? Let me let me go on Wikipedia and run down his his accomplishments. But talk to me about what you know about David Goggins. Bro, he has made himself into a meme of just hard work, dedication, nobody cares, suck it up, yeah, stay bro. hard. Like, for, like they, I'm going <laughs> to pause yeah, that but, part, but yeah. <laughs> but like, but he yells that, bro. And like, if I was around him, I wouldn't be like, oh, I wouldn't make a joke about it. No, you can't. You if know? he said. I, I would if, be like, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. If he said bro. some <laughs> super pause worthy stuff, you just got to grit your teeth and get through that one because you ain't saying that to David Goggins. Bro, and then you hear about the stuff that he's actually done. He's yeah, like, here yes, we go. So ready? Ready? Here we 75, go. 75,000 miles. <laughs> and I had to get surgery in the middle of the run. <laughs> I went and got surgery. My foot was falling off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, and I went back and finished it. And my, I was chafing. I was bleeding everywhere. Like that. I'm like, bro, what? And it's like I came in, but I, I got. I was. I was in 860 places, but I, but I finished. But it. I finished it. it. He's insane, dude. Stay hard. And then Stay the video. <laughs> like, whoa, bro, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Why? This hard though? Hey, yo, if I was like, can we use like a medium? Do we gotta be this rock solid all the time, dude? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, bro. It just, he just, he just, you gotta be staying hard and rock solid when you're around David Goggins. <laughs> you gotta relax a little bit. No, nah, dude, he he's always on a hundred. He says Goggins applied to the U.S. Force Air Force pararescues and accepted into training. During the training, he was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. Did not That's know crazy. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which means I think there. I don't. I actually don't know. I remember they tested us for it in college when we played college football so that when we went to high altitude places, you couldn't even take the trip. Right. Exactly. Because you would get fucked up and potentially die. That's how crazy yeah. that is. Anyway. Um, da, 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 da. He later quit an exterminator job to become a Navy seal. After leaving the air force, he joined the reserves, yep. eventually making the weight limit to begin training as a seal after losing 106 pounds in three months. What? A bit unnecessary, but I love it. In three months, he graduated Bud's uh, fantastic, became a SEAL, served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, then he graduated Army Ranger School. Uh, a bunch of stuff that I don't know that's probably ridiculous high honors. Did some stuff, more stuff in Afghanistan. Then started marathon running and ultra marathon running. Here we go with just, this. Sorry, just got to run these down test. here, dude. Uh, former gold, excuse me, former Guinness World Record holder for pull-ups, 4,030 in 17 hours. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've done 4,000 pull-ups in my life. But okay. Why? Just because. Love um, it. He entered the Hurt 100 in Hawaii and was invited, I guess, on the Hurt 100 is you run for 100 hours. Essentially, I don't know what that means. Um, That's what I was talking about. The I San Diego one day, 24 hour ultra marathon. Ridiculous. Um, the Moab 240 ultra marathon. 
Placing second, oh no, excuse me, 100 probably means 100 miles, sorry. Placing second in the 241 mile event with a time of 63 hours and 21 minutes. Bro, so he got, but I think that's the one, that's the one I think I was, yeah. I wasn't kidding. Yeah. I was joking about the placement, I knew he placed high, almost one. But I think he got, he got surgery in the middle of it. That's insane. He like had to go to like an urgent care or something and they did like perform something, I swear. That's insane. So anyway, like I said, Army Ranger, Navy SEAL, he's been the highest honor. Obviously, days after Veterans Day, thank you for your service, uh, you know, Mr. Goggins. Uh, a nice. legend, of course. But he has now crossed over into the MMA scene, Face yeah. Sensei. Not just on the Joe Rogan podcast, but in actual training for a week with one Tony Ferguson. Did you see what happened here? I did, and before we get into that, I just want to ask your opinion on David in general. What do you think? What do you think about him and his like philosophy? Do you think it's good? Like, do you think it's a good thing for the majority you know, of people? How, yeah. No. I'm talking about just. I'm not. Before we go into Tony, I'm I'm talking about just the way that he is. The That's way that what I'm saying. Is. For the majority of people in living their normal life, that mentality will probably like. Let's say you have a family. It's going to drive you to divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yes, I I will I will agree with you, but also rebuttal that because I yeah. do think it's good, but the, I think it's good because number one, I don't think people are going to ever mimic it. But I don't I think, think you it, can, right? And but I, so I, if if people were to, I do think it would be bad. The mentality right? of How, it, I get. The however, of it, I hmm. love it. I love his existence because. What he is is an overcorrection, yeah. and he's a, an illustration yeah. that things can be done. Like I'm not gonna do a four minute mile, but it can. But be it done. lets me know that my five thirty eight mile, the where I feel like I'm the fastest man on the planet, I'm not even close. Right, right. So it's like I'm not gonna run that four mile minute, but it, but it, it it does something to me in my my belief about potential. Right, right. So I his because. At the base of what he is, it's all about empowerment. Yep. Yes, it's 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 incorrectly placed, or it's or it's over uh, correction a lot, and it's like too much. However, I think, I think kind of the character that he's taking on, I think he's taking on like this role as like this is how everyone's not supposed to live this way, but I've taken on the role to be this guy. Yep. For like the world, uh, to show you that regardless of your uh, disadvantages. Like the answer is always you, bro. Like you, like you can do it regardless of limitations, breaking through walls. So that part I love it. But no, Jesus, like I'm not like going around acting like that. I'm just trying Honestly. to. I'm just trying to search for David Goggins. I didn't mean to, you know. What? What? Shout out my girl Joella. My God. <laughs> oh my. I'm just trying to look. At, I'm trying to... Wade's over here, like stay hard. <laughs> look at him. Look at him, dude. <laughs> Yo, I took his, I took David Goggins to heart. A little he too it. literally. No, bro, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm on the <laughs> I'm ready for Hell Week. Um, no, I agree with what you're saying, dude. There, there, the world needs people like him. Right, exactly. The world needs like people like him. We Not to be like, like him, him, but you need people like him. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Someone to look to to say it's possible. And for the for the one percenters that genuinely don't have, I mean, I don't know, you want to call it direction or motivation but have that 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 potential david goggins potential maybe they would never see it he's the extreme exactly so with that being said another one percenter as far as mentality is concerned is one tony ferguson and we're just gonna give you a couple of things i don't even know where to start by the way um he he has this thing called hell week apparently no one's ever finished it until tony ferguson just did so, you already knew Tony was a bad motherfucker. El Cucuy. Literally. So, this is what this is what went down. I don't know that we're going to watch every video. Also, amazing endurance athlete. Yeah. Co like, that's Tony. The, that's the thing Cardio that king me. in MMA. Yeah, this is what confused me. So, here it is. Day one of Hell Week with Tony Ferguson consisted of three plus hours of high intensity tempo cardio over 600 push-ups, tons of chest exercises, Stair climber, assault bike, rowing, elliptical, then repeat. Tony. Hold on a second. Time out, bro. Let's do the math. What did, what did you just say? Does he mean that they did three plus hours 
of all of this shit and then repeated it? Bro, like, what are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. But he says, Tony's given everything he has and he's officially back in the lab. Stay hard. <laughs> God damn. There it is. That was for you. <laughs> that one's for you guys in the comments. All right. Bro, the, the crazy part about it is the stay word. That's the one. Yeah, the not get it, hard. You know? And he, but the thing, he means it. He don't. He's not like. He don't have like, to get hard. This. He stays hard. He's not like everything you got. He means like everything you got at every second. Right. He's like stay. Like, stay that way. No Viagra. Stay hard. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, you see him. Okay. I don't even know if we can show that on oh. YouTube. There's Tony barfing into a toilet. <laughs> And recording it with a selfie. What are we and doing recording here? Recording it for himself. <laughs> He's like, I want to make sure we got this part <laughs> right here. Just, the man barfed into the toilet. <laughs> and and recorded it, bro. What are we doing? What are we doing? Who are I, we doing dude, this for? I don't. That's the question, right? Who are we doing this for? Because, again, you see Tony on the, the Stairmaster, which is a brutal machine. Hold on, we have to watch that part again because I don't want to. You know what they did? You know what they just yelled, right? Oh fuck! Damn it! Sorry, I just don't want to play the music, Christian. So skip this part. Okay, we, there's the puke part again. <laughs> he shows okay, golly! I just want to see the last part. I want to see if they cut the audio and see what he says. But you see him on the on the assault bike. There, and by the way, Tony's a fucking monster, dude. Who else is signing up to do this? Okay, I don't know what he said there, but it looked like stay hard. Yep. Um, so here is uh, another message. I'm not going to read all this, but essentially this is, again, David Goggins saying that he is putting Tony through hell. Like Hell Week should be. Um, actually, no, I'll read it because it gives context. Many of you will not understand what I'm putting Tony through right now, but when a man like Tony is looking for more, it forces him to go deep into the dungeon because my job is to make him find every bit of himself and then some. And he is doing just that. He has unbelievable resolve, ability, and willingness to suffer. This speaks to his character. This is not for the weak. There are not many people I know in this world who can do what I have put Tony through and still be upright, let alone be on the treadmill on day three of Hell Week. Most, most of the footage will never be seen. And he talks about a podcast with Joe Rogan. And then again, stay hard. Um, <laughs> yep. So let me see what he This said. is where you win. This is where you win right here. Come on, Tony. Come on. This is what concerns me. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Yo. Jogging on the incline. It's not just that, right? So look at David Goggins, who is a freak of all freaks, and Tony is as well. This is day three of Hell Week, right? Let's just let's just let's restart it. This is where you win. You know, David Goggins, this is where you win. You know what I'm saying? He's 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 fit enough and he's done this enough to be able to talk through what he's doing. Right. This is where you win right here. Come on, Tony. Come on. This is where you win. Bro. Tony looks like he's dead or he's dying. That's, me, that's like me like day three of training. <laughs> that looks like me 30 We're minutes saying. into this shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. That yeah. This is my problem with this. And this is what I said on Twitter. And I, bro. I got the most crazy responses to this, and I understand, guys. Listen, I'll be the first guy to tell you I am no army ranger. I am th this is legitimately what we talked about to start today's episode. I am not the person that is going to be able to implement exactly what David Goggins says. Does that am I beta? Sure. Does that I'm not staying hard <laughs> enough? Yes. I'm going to see a doctor about it later this week. I don't know <laughs> what you want me to say. No, of course not. I'm not going to be doing these things. But my... Okay, right. this is what I said. Uh, because, essentially, David Goggins said this to his quote-unquote haters about the exercises for Tony. All right. Today's workout started with 45 minutes jumping jack push-ups. Meanwhile, Tony's in the back. Jumping jack push-ups? 45 jack, minutes? Jumping jack what, you, what are you talking about? I, don't, I will say it's a beautiful place wherever they're at. All right, today's workout started with 45 Tony's minutes. Tony's struggling on them lunges. Jumping jack push-ups. <laughs> what that is is 10 getting through it. jumping jacks, followed by 10 push-ups for 45 minutes nonstop. All right, now we're what? back. What? 
I have to run it back. 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 I don't think I heard it. Hold on. Followed by 10 push ups for 45 minutes nonstop. Go to the first part. 10 four count jumping jacks. Followed by 10 push ups for 45 minutes nonstop. 10 four four count. One, two, three, four. 10 of those. No, I think he means full four count. What do you mean, like? One, one, two, yeah, bro. Three, four. That's one. So forty yeah, jumping jacks. Yeah, bro. Forty jumping jacks. Ten push-ups for forty-five minutes straight. Why? Why did he just say that? See, this is what gets me about people like this. Why don't you just say forty jacks? Why are you gonna be like, uh, so ten four count jumping jacks? I don't know what the difference is. That's probably just military talk. But still, for forty-five minutes, you'd have to think that's over. Like he said, over six hundred of whatever, and over a thousand. Bro, uh, what are we jacks. saying? What are we doing? Three minutes? Two minutes? I'm not la- – yeah, two minutes, dude. I'm done. Yeah, two, three minutes? Yeah, bro. But that's just the start. Hold on. That's the warm-up. All right, now we're back into the lunges. A lot of you saw the lunges video yesterday. Tony went for over, at, well over a mile. Look at Tony. Tony is hurt. Well over a mile. Stair climber. Fucking treadmill. High incline. Assault bike. And then repeat that over again. Then at nighttime, <laughs> fucking did a full leg workout. So a lot what? of these fucking comments I'm talking about rest and recovery, all this bullshit. A lot of you don't get it, man. He did rest. He slept for eight fucking hours. There's an adaptation process that goes into mental fucking hardening. The body has to fucking know you're not fucking around with it. The mind has to evolve into something evil to do the things that he has to fucking do here pretty Dang. soon. There's no normal training in that. Normal training gives you fucking normal results. The adaptation process comes into suffering. Tony's about comes to the things you don't want to do. Comes with oh. every fucking step you take. You're in pain. You're in suffering. That's What's exactly Tony what right was Those the knees are not there. Banging right. off that stay ground. Stay hard. There, stay hard again. Dude, I, I don't. Okay, so this is this is aimed at people like me. Because, <laughs> yes, I'm the pussy apparently, but. All I said was having Tony at his age working past failure every single day while prepping for a fight in a month, knowing at his age he won't recover the same way he once did, is not a good idea. Maybe for the psychological aspect, but Tony never struggled to push himself to insane levels. Yeah, but he's been, he is not a guy who we, we concerned about motivation and hard work and dedication and discipline and commitment and endurance training and cardiovascular training, not showing up in shape. This is not a guy that we've ever been worried. About. He's been a pillar of that. Here's Chael, the game, you know? who is a fighter. So I saw somebody in the, one of my replies was like, oh, Wade, tell me more about your expertise. Have you ever been in a fight? I was like, yeah, you show me when David Goggins has been a successful strength and conditioning coach for any fighter. And to be fair, not to put myself in the same, I'm not doing that. But yep. David Goggins, never been in a fight either. So I'm sure he's been in a fight, but not in an MMA fight. So don't hit me with that. If you want to say, Wade, you don't know how to work out. Well, okay, that's fine. But my if, point is. If there is, was no rounds, if there was no rounds in these fights and it was just to the death. Fine. Like to the, until somebody loses. Fine. I think this would probably be optimal, you know, in a way. You that's know? fine. you just. But, but we're talking about we're a guy in doing Tony. That. We're not doing that. That doesn't struggle with fatigue. And because this isn't going to build his endurance. That's not what right. this is. No. What this is is building a mentality to go like David Goggins said, to go into the to, to the dungeons, to mentally be through hell and still, you know, be comfortable, to tell your body not to quit. <laughs> Tony already does that. I would say that's actually uh his weakness, I think. Yeah, to a detriment. He does right. that. I think it, he, sometimes it, it, he doesn't, maybe isn't as disciplined as what's he What's be. wrong with Tony, exactly. What's wrong with Tony Ferguson right now isn't anything to do with mindset when it comes to a fighter or willing to go to places others won't. This is a man that has yeah. made a career off of doing that. When when like fights he, even like weren't his going his way. breaks during a fight. You got an arm bar, his arm is breaking. He cool. ain't care. Yeah, whatever, dude. Care. That's that's fine. I'm losing every that. round. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. Hold these freaking elbows off my back. Darce choke. Done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it doesn't... What made Tony special wasn't, and you know, potentially what still may for one more... I don't know. It's fucking Patty Pimblet they put him in there with. But what made him special wasn't the fact that he ever had any physical 
jumping off the page advantages. It was his mentality. It was right, a guy who was willing will. to do what no other guy was in that in that case. And a nasty rubber guard, yeah. But other than that, his rubber yeah. guard also allowed him to. And his and to be fair, his physical intangibles gave him the Darce. His Darce is crazy because of his long arms and skinny kind of. Yeah, yeah. His jiu-jitsu and then his obviously his endurance though. But that his came, endurance exactly. His mentality came with his endurance. What this is doing is doubling down on that when the things that Tony has struggled with as he's gotten older is the game catching up to him. Right, exactly. The game itself. The game is caught up. You have to be more than one or two dimensional now. You can't yeah. fight as reckless as Tony does with guys in a three round fight that are, you know, looking to win, even if it's just a decision. And, and you might not like that, but yeah. guys are better athletes. They're younger. And technically, they're more proficient. They're not as reckless, and they get to things easier and quicker than Tony does. Facts. And for all of you who are thinking uh, that Wade's not speaking, spitting facts, um, Faraz, one of the GOAT coaches of MMA of all time, have you heard what he has to say about training? His Enlighten philosophy? the people. Uh, never train through failure. Come in and train a little bit. About to, you're about to reach failure, and then go home and rest. This way, you can avoid. He wants to actually avoid extreme fatigue, so that he can shorten the recovery process, so that you can get vo more volume with training and spend less time recovering from being so sore. Because when you're training, let's say you get like an example. Let's say we're doing ten reps, and on the twelfth, the eleven and twelfth rep are the ones that are going to make you sore, really sore for the next couple of days, so a yep. couple extra reps. Why don't we just stop at 10 or at 9 so you can come back and do 9 tomorrow instead of doing t 12 again in, in three more days because you can't do any reps in the next few days because we got to recover. Right. So a guy who's trained some of the best ever, the one being George St. Pierre, a pillar of athleticism and discipline and, and, and conditioning. Yep. He would come in. George had talked about he would come in. They would do. He would just do 25 minutes. He'd warm up. He would do five, five-minute rounds, high intensity to prepare specifically to optimize himself for um, for a fight, yep. for a, a UFC championship fight, Yep. right? To, to maximize volume so they can learn more. Faraz said, hey, how, how many how many reps of, of technique are you getting? Are you too tired? Because we're spending too much time doing strength and conditioning. How, are, are your technique getting better? Is your timing getting better, right? Are you getting better at the game? Are you getting better at your arts? How much are you learning? How much are you improving? If you're always gassed out and fatigued and recovering, like what's the balance of endurance training and recovery and with actual development? Yeah. And as as a veteran, as a guy like right, we obviously he's always been in shape. You would think, how can we improve this guy's game? Would be the thing that would be better for him, right? And it's not just Wade saying it. It would be like people who are in the game have been in the game, and coaches would be like, okay, we we get it, but this is just it seems like it's a. It's counterintuitive know, like, uh, to what Tony, in my opinion, yeah, needs. And it's yeah. it, this is going to sound super blunt, but it's just Tony, he has to be a better fighter. That's it. He has to be better at fighting. Bro, bro, hear this. Call me crazy. I feel like this, Tony, Tony wanted to do this because this is actually more in his comfort zone. Yes, dude. This is what I'm saying. When people when it, when people went oh Tony's looking for that thing he 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 he's looking for something I know and where's the first the place you go when you're looking for something to motivate you you go right back to the thing that motivated you in the first place El Kakui right the thing that yes. no one else will do I'll go do because have that makes me a bad motherfucker like. have him do technique he doesn't train things that he doesn't like to slow things down and and work on the little things and maybe change his game a little bit change his stance or his his approach to striking. Uh, break down his striking ability or break down his approach to the game and have a different game plan completely. Have him think about fighting differently. Bars. Break down. Even think of that. Break down. So that, right? Like me, if you, oh, you take me to like a karate gym and have me work in the craziest karate training ever instead of me going to wrestle. Yep. Like that's the, that's the thing the you want to do. That's what, that's the easy day for you. And not that this is easy at all Facts. because Tony looked like he was on the door of death. No, but that's no, what he no, wants but, to be. Right. Physically, but mentally and emotionally, it's, it, I feel like this is probably his comfort zone because this is what he's been about. That's what I'm saying. So that's the point I, I, I wanted to come to here is, will he beat Patty Pimblett? I have no idea. I think the UFC has put him in there with a young guy as a way to get Patty over, to be honest with you. I think this is 
their way of going, okay, Patty, this is your, you know, quote unquote real test. This is either sink or swim because Tony's a massive name. He's a legend in the game. Yeah. Former interim yep. champ, probably should have been champ. Be honest, on his way out of the division, probably. And this is his, you know, last go of it. I just don't think that for what Tony needs for three rounds, this is going to make any difference in his fight. Mentally, I think he was already there. Mentally, he can already get there. He's going to go back there. That's not what it is. You have to be a better fighter. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't need this. His talent at a younger age, we wouldn't even be talking about it, him versus Patty Pimblett. We'd be like, "What, bro? Tony by whatever." You know what I'm saying? Like, Tony was that guy. Facts. But he's thirty. What? Thirty seven now. Thirty eight. And I just don't know that pushing a thirty plus, you know, late thirties man's body to the brink. Now, granted, he has about three weeks to recover from this, so it probably won't matter. But I don't think this was very optimal, um, and that's that's it was not. Fun. It was fun for socials. It was a great. Yeah, it was, it was great, great for socials for sure. Got a lot of reactions. No doubt. Dope collaboration. Uh, but who asked? Didn't he request David? I think didn't yeah, he reach out uh, to dude, David? Dude, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's like Ronda Rousey wrote, being like, she's like, all right, I'm going through the hardest judo training ever to prepare <laughs> right. for a fight. Like you're already yes, it's very it's very intense. To be honest, of the for of Ronda, the thing that you're already good at. To be honest though, for Ronda, probably would have probably would have helped her out a lot more because her no, thinking is she, she was a boxer. Wrestle. No, yeah, as I'm saying, lean on her grapple. Don't get me on this Ronda thing, dude. But what she when she started thinking she was a boxer, homie, she just needed to wrestle. When she started hearing Anyways. freaking Edmund telling her that she was the world champ boxing, it was over. Uh. Okay, yeah. well, those aren't push-ups, but all right. Um, okay, for that. But listen, the point of this whole thing is we love Tony. We love David Goggins. That mix love them both for motivation, honestly, in a post-UFC career, I'd love to see Tony Ferguson alongside David Goggins in some kind of program or some kind of motivational whatever because 100%. you, you want to talk about a guy that's looking for something. When Tony's done fighting, that's when it gets a little scary. The guy with his mentality. Let's not forget that there was a point in Tony's career where he was just on the freeway and just got out of his car and started running. Yeah. Up a hill. For reasons still unknown. Just ran. So you know that mentally he needs that something. He saw David. He was listening to a David video. Stay hard. He said, damn it. (laughs) Parked the car. Got out. I'm like, no, right now. So you need you know he needs that something in his life, and that's what I think that that, that this would work for for a post a post fight career. You know, what yeah. I'm saying motivational speaker training, getting people in these programs. I love that for his fight versus Patty Pimblett. Not so sure, but comment section, you let us know. Are you willing to stay hard, <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to be a bitch? And if so, how long? How long? Uh, uh, are you going? We don't have those answers, but apparently David Goggins <laughs> does, and Tony Ferguson, when he fights Patty Pimblett, will see. So, I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs.